Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. I'm Thomas Shane. And if you're looking to talk with us during our live discussions, uh, please check us out on Monday nights at eight o uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. And that's at youtube.com slash user slash cur of anarchy. And you can see the final products that we make. Uh, we take it, we add graphics, edit it down, uh, and it's on the air at youtube.com youtube.com slash user slash voluntary virtues. And that's 3 p.m. Eastern, New Pacific, uh, at Voluntary Virtues, and we just, I think he just got that website up completely, and that's at voluntaryvirtues.com. Uh, so, Michael Shanklin, thank you very much. And uh, so, Thomas and I are going to talk about pride, um, but we're going to, you know, uh, have that be the resounding issue of the day, but we're going to hit different areas and different aspects of this. So, um... Uh, what I want to talk about real quick is how uh, pride is thought of usually as a personal thing uh, that you basically you just believe in something without question. I, I think that's the generic definition of this to start this off. Um, you believe in it, you don't question it, you it's basically loyalty only much more uh, emotional in a sense. And um, you, have, you can have pride in yourself, you can have pride in your family, uh, pride in your school, pride in the military, pride in the country. Um, it, it can take all kinds of forms. And the thing that I have a problem with is that, uh, and we might debate about this, Thomas, I'm not sure, but uh, I think pride basically is a bad thing, 100%. And the reason why I say that is there's a difference between pride and um, working hard for something on a personal level and taking stock of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you have pride in a country, um, without question, uh, you're, you could be completely wrong. And... It, Never mind the fact that you're not actually working toward whatever their end goal is. Uh, because, or generally. So, like, me as a programmer, I'm working for that company. I'm not working for a country. I, there's, I have no interaction with the state other than what they force upon me. So, I don't take pride at all in the country. I, I can't. Uh, and if I were to take pride in the, the company, well, basically I'm, I'm just having blind faith that they're doing the right thing, even though I don't know the ins and outs of that company. Like, I can have pride in my work because that's what I'm giving to the company. I mean, I'm really diving in here, but um, I, I'm hoping that this comes across, you know, quickly to someone that's starting in on this kind of stuff. But um, I guess I'll leave it at that just to start off. What do, what do you say, Thomas? Do you have um, any response? Well, yeah, I was going to, what you said about pride uh, being like ob uh, objectively a bad thing, I was going to, well, I still will kind of debate you a little on that because I don't believe in objective, good or bad, objective, bad or wrong. Those are relative terms. But um, basically I would say that pride can be, either a good thing or a bad thing, but first of all you need to be you need to take into consideration whether it's individual pride or it's collective pride because usually it, in my personal opinion there's nothing wrong with personal pride, taking pride in what you do and your your accomplishments as an individual um, so long as you feel that they are moral or just. But uh, where I think it gets kind of hairy is that whole collective pride thing, like the nationalism, racism, the ethnic pride, collective pride, even taking pride in your in your country or uh, in your government or your military or anything like that, taking pride in accomplishments, um, things that you didn't do, things that you had no part of, taking pride in things that other people did or um, 
you know, just that sort of collective, collect being proud of something that you had nothing to do with, but just wanting to be a member of that group that believe that to, is proud of that thing. Um, I think that's where, it, in my opinion, that's where it becomes a bad thing is when it's not personal, and that's kind of basically what sounds like what you were saying is that. Uh, working towards something and taking stock of that, acknowledging and appreciating your accomplishments, but not, you know, taking pride in a nation or some group or some concept or idea. I don't believe in that. Yeah, uh, I, I guess we're on the same page there, but I think that there there is one thing that I did miss, uh, and there's a little there's a difference between a little pride and being so proud that you're not willing to change or basically you're closed-minded and uh, so like um, you can't accept that you were wrong about something so that's being prideful and I so this is I guess uh, another aspect to it and yeah you're right there is a there is no absolutely clear-cut thing saying pride is bad it's almost like saying um, you know, eating is bad because you could get fat. You know, mm -hmm. like th that would be gluttony. You know, if you're just constantly eating, uh, but you know, eating is good for you because you need to eat. But uh, taking pride in yourself and your accomplishments and your work is a good thing. But um, being so proud as to your work and say, uh, not accepting that you made mistakes or that the concept was wrong that kind of thing that's mm. that's bad so um, but yeah um, being uh, happy in your work is um, where I'm coming from that's a good thing mm -hmm. so uh, but yeah most of the aspects of pride or at least as we know it today is bad and mm -hmm. uh, you know and why I say bad is because I think there is such a thing as bad and good, evil versus good. I think there is such a thing because, you know, inherently, in my eyes, the government is evil. It's bad. That's that's where I'm coming from. Any kind of use of force. But in any case, um, yeah, being closed-minded is bad. I guess that's where I'm coming from. Well, yeah, definitely. Um like you were saying, if if you per, if you like you and I personally believe that government government is bad, it is it's wrong and immoral. Um, somebody, a lot of people obviously don't believe that same philosophy that you and I do, and they take pride in what the government does. Um, mm. To you and I, that would be bad, yes. But to them, yeah. you know, obviously, it's it's cool or it's what's you know. It's that feeling of of unity and just uh, emotional satisfaction that is attached with that kind of group thought. And yeah. this is kind of interesting. The definition, the dictionary definition of pride uh, is a feeling or deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements, the achievements of those with whom one is closely associated with, or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. So to me that kind of sounds like national pride in and of itself would be an oxymoron because that's not this, that's not your own achievements and it's not achievements of those you're closely associated with uh, it's achievements of everyone who was directly involved in the achievements of those of that nation or that government or whatever it is you're talking about so hmm. apparently that doesn't really make sense so that's even more interesting but yeah, yeah, I would I would say in my opinion the two the two worst forms of of uh, pride or collectivist pride anyway it would be nationalism and uh, uh, ethnic pride because those are the two that seem to cause they give people this satisfaction and enjoyment and uh, this entitlement of they feel entitled to to take accountability for the for the achievements of a certain nation or what they believe they believe in. It's hard for me to talk about this about like national pride and stuff because the people honestly believe that the United States is the greatest country in the world and we have the most freedoms and we have such a noble and virtuous government and they're always protecting people all over this stuff and the fact that that doesn't ring true to me makes it hard for me to 
describe this or get into the mind of them. But basically yeah. what it looks like to me is them trying to be a part of something that they had nothing to do with. Uh, and they will even take it further. Like you said, there's a difference between a little pride and being so proud that you're close-minded or that you're unwilling to see any other alternatives. That's when people start mm -hmm. to develop uh, like hatred for like entire groups of people that they haven't met or this full sense of superiority to the rest of the world because, uh, you know, because of their ethnicity or their nationality. Uh, and that's how you get things like Hitler and the Nazis. So we all know how that went. Yeah, I often talk about how there are so many so similarities here with, uh, you, you know, to the Nazis. It, it's just unbelievable, and you know, people that. people laugh it off, and I'm like, no, it's it's right in front of you. You know, it. Yeah. It's unfortunate that people can't see it, and honestly, I couldn't see it forever. You know, it it, it takes a long time. You know, when that much. You know, indoctrination was put upon you since basically birth. You know, you, you don't know. You can't see it. But no. um, that's or the pride. Yeah. They, yeah might, they might refuse to see it. They would rather live a comfortable lie than be exposed and acknowledge, be exposed to the truth and acknowledge that what they've thought for so long is a lie. Right. Yeah. Lie. Like the more, he said it this himself, the more you repeat a lie, the the more they think it's the truth or something to that effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's absolutely right, and it's, it's really heart, uh, disheartening. Um, yeah. yeah, we waved the flag just as much as they did. You know, the uh, I go down to um, uh, this place uh, the next town over, and there are literally 50 flags uh, lining this building. It, it's pretty disgusting, actually. And I don't even know what they are as a business. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they do. It could be defense for all I know. But but you'd probably never go in there, would you? <clears throat> no, hell no. No, not anymore, now that I know better, you know? No, uh, that's what's so bad about it, in my opinion, in your opinion, and a lot of people's opinion. Uh, that's what's so bad about collective pride is that it causes so much uh, fear and ignorance and hatred and it just comes together in this perfect storm and just uh, it's really sad and it's unfortunate because as human beings as individual human beings we should be smarter than that we should be better than that but right. um, I was just watching a show about uh, it's about have you heard about them apparently nationalism is on is seriously on the rise through like all of Europe and in Russia and it's just becoming more of a problem by the day uh, a problem for some people, and not a problem for other people like the governments. But uh, yeah. so these Russian nationalists are literally—they've literally come to the point where they uh, have so much national pride that they don't want anybody non-Russian in their country dirtying up their, you know, whatever their nation. Um, so they've actually formed. I mean, their government is already their government is flip floppy about it because on one hand they just passed some they they had just passed in the video they had previously just passed some policy for immigration because they were saying apparently Russia and Moscow in particular has a really low birth rate so the government decided we need more migrants here to to work to fill jobs that need to be filled to stimulate the economy. But then uh, the police are a different story because, uh, like, there was a, there was a, if there's protests and things, basically the the Russian nationalists are going around terrorizing these people from that are migrants from other countries just because they're not Russian. They're breaking. It's gone to the point where they're destroying their businesses. They're breaking into their homes in the middle of the night, unwarranted, no no legal or moral responsibility there. Um, breaking into these people's houses and just demanding to see their papers and if they don't have their papers they call the police and the police will come and arrest them or if there's a riot uh, the police apparently have been known to arrest the migrants and deport them for their own safety instead of doing anything about the massive hate crime that's taking place and that's probably because they're just as much on board with it as the rest they're all Russians too they're just as much they have just the same national pride so it's kind of weird how in certain things like that, uh, government and, and individual governments and citizens can kind of come together and collude like that, and it's, you know, it's really, it's just another really scary thing happening in the world, but, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that 
Well, I guess it has. Depending on where you are in this country, it can be pretty bad, right? Mm, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So I I guess I have a question for you. Um, I don't think I would know the answer to this. How how is it that um, uh, people's mindsets can change over time? Uh, well, between generations, of course. But um, so like we had. Uh, we had people come to hear from Ellis Island uh, or through Ellis Island uh, in New York, and that was in the the 20s. And and I mean, people were against it back then as well, uh, the immigration, but not to the degree that I'm seeing, or at least I'm at least I'm perceiving differently. Um, so we had people come through Ellis Island and now we have people coming through Mexico and it's a completely dis different situation. People do not are, are basically trying to shoot them down or send them across the border back to Mexico and um, I feel like I feel like it's different. Um, not like the you know you always have that initiation you know like with the Irish and the Italians uh, coming through Ellis Island um, uh, there was uh, a big influx. Uh, you, you actually had Japanese intern internment camps, but that was after uh, the World War II started. So, uh, I mean, there's uh, all these kinds of um, groups that come to the United States, and it's sort of a different situation every time. I, I feel like the nationalism grows over time, and the violence grows over time. Is that true? Do you see it? Uh, do you see what I'm seeing? I guess. Um, yeah, I guess what you're what you're asking is: is it does it seem worse? Does it seem more prevalent? And I would say yes, it does. I would say it's probably because uh, there are so much there are so many of us now living here as opposed to you know back then. Um, and people have just become so filled with national pride and hatred for things that are different, and they've been they've become so, you know, politicalized and radicalized. Uh, I think a lot of people have just lost their humanity. They've lost they've they've no they're no longer uh, regarding these individuals that are coming over here as human beings. They're regarding them as something else. They're dehumanizing them. Um, and I honestly, I can't tell you why. I mean, I know what they say. A lot of them say that it's, you know, they're going to come over here and bankrupt the welfare system. Um, what about the corporate yeah. welfare system? What about the what about the con the constant wars over U.S. imperialism that are costing, you know, astronomical more amounts money than the welfare state and the social programs? Um, if you are really concerned with somebody bankrupting the country, you should be concerned with the government, the government that a lot of them worship uh, and turn to to fix the problem. Maybe you should be considering how they've caused the problem with their imperialism of other of other nations, making them you know uninhabitable, uh, just destroying the economies, d destroying their resources and environments. And where are these people supposed to go? So. I like I said I just I don't I get it but I don't get it I don't I personally don't care who wants to come here can come here I don't believe in obviously I don't believe in the borders and somebody was trying to say that it's a contradiction for uh, that they, they were mocking anarcho capitalists uh, and free market libertarians about saying that because we believe in private property but we don't believe in borders and my answer to that would be a lot of a lot of them do believe in private property, but legitimately owned or legitimately gained private property, which the government's private property is not. We don't see that as legitimate property to deny other people access to. So, right. I mean, I, um, for I me, think right? I I was just thinking like we believe in our own fences, but not the government's is what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, I feel like uh, a lot of people don't understand anarchism because just for the fact that they're not trying to research it. Uh, you know, they ask a lot of these simple questions and that could be answered um, if they read a book or looked into it further and instead of outright rejecting it. You know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what happens. Uh, a lot of people just 
break down. They get the closed-mindedness back into their head. Uh, you know, if if they keep on researching, I think all the logic, all the puzzle pieces will come together. But um, when, pride is uh, something that I always actually had a problem with ever since probably third grade. That's that's one thing that's always stuck with me. I never had national pride or school pride. I never had school pride. You know, like um, I was on a varsity golf team, but I just was happy that I was on the team and, you know, hitting a ball around, you know, the, because golf is actually more of an individual sport anyway. So, like, uh, but I, it was fun, you know, but there, it doesn't mean that I was, I really cared about the team uh, or the school itself, you know, like uh, we were always required to be, um, uh, there for that football pep rally thing, uh, but that meant nothing to me. Yeah, I got out of the rest of the uh, the day's classes. I was happy about that, but I wasn't prideful for the football team. I don't understand how uh, people that aren't on the team can be prideful for the team. Exactly. I, I don't get that. I mean, you can be a fan of the sport because it's fun, but how can you get so attached? Now, th the irony is I'm I'm a Red Sox fan, but maybe because it's latent in me now because I've grown up with it and I but I don't I don't uh watch the Red Sox all the time either. I I, I don't know. That that's kind of a hypocritical thing inside of me right now, but Beyond that, I guess I'm still consistent. I, I don't care about school pride. I don't care about national pride. I don't care about the state I, or Massachusetts or whatever. You know, I, I don't get how um, people can be so caught up in it, I guess. I'll, I'll stop. I'm ranting. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that's it. That's, like I said before, that's, that's, I'm not opposed to individual pride. You you think pride is a bad thing. I see where you're coming from. I think that pride right. on an individual basis, pride of your own acknowledgments, or pride of your own achievements and accomplishments uh, can be a good thing. It can be a motivator. It can make you, when you take pride in something, you're going to really do a good job. You're going to give it 100%. You're not, you know. Um, but that's the whole thing is when it's when it stops becoming pride in what you've done as an individual, and it starts becoming pride in what some other people have done that are that may or may not be associated with you in some way. That I don't get, and that's when it, you know, that's when it seems if you if you if you look at history and you look at the trends of that sort of thing happening, that's when it seems to get bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Um, I think uh, there's a big similarity here with Rome. Uh, I was thinking about how. The Colosseum was a big deal back then, and it brought up this violent uh, nature for everyone, and uh, well, at least aggressive. Um, and now we have football, baseball, you know, name it. Um, and yeah, you have a separation of sports. You've got bowling and golf, that kind of thing, tennis, um, and then you've got the team sports. But that's okay. Uh, it, it's okay to be uh, to watch something. I think the problem is people don't separate the sport from the nation, and they get caught up in that uh, the team spirit. And uh, if you can make the distinction, like I do with sports, I like baseball, I like bowling, you know that kind of thing. Uh, I can separate that from uh, national pride, you know, just for the fact that we ended up being born in, in the United States doesn't mean that we have to uh, attest to them or, you know, uh, subscribe to their policies. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people, I, I think a lot of people really do uh, just get caught up in that spirit and don't really get it 
you know, just for the fact that they ended up living in a certain school's district, they have to love that school. You know, uh, I, you know, growing up in uh, Salem, Massachusetts, a lot of people hated Beverly, which is just over the bridge, uh, just over the water, and uh, you know, people had friends in Beverly, uh, but they hated the school. Just you know, well, not hate because that's a strong word for just a school. But you know what I'm saying. There's that um, conflict. To what end? To, or why? Why did? I'm sorry. Go ahead. They had a distaste for it. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's all I'm saying. It, it, just why? Why do? Why do you have to dislike this? Uh, other country or other city or other state. Why? You know, it's no because point. They get an emotional. They get an emotional satisfaction from it. Yeah. I think that's the whole thing that drives the collective uh, group think pride, national pride, ethnic pride thing. They get the emotional satisfaction uh, out of it so much yeah. to the point where they're, you know they'll inevitably end up cheering on the deaths of innocent people because look at the whole Israel-Gaza uh, thing. That's a perfect example uh, and relevant to what's going on right now. Yes. Uh, there are so many people that are so proud of Is this, the Holy Land, the state of Israel, and they are so proud to be Jewish. I'm not saying this is all Jewish people. I'm just saying there are a lot of Jewish people who are just, they're so proud of the fact, uh, they're so proud of Israel and of, and of the religion of Judaism that they're encouraging and they're justifying and they're cheering on the deaths of like men, women, and children, people that have done nothing to them, people that they don't know, all for the sake of pride because they're blinded by the pride. They're, they, they've become blinded so much to the point where they've lost their humanity. Uh, and they've lost their objectivity to the world of seeing another human being as an extension of yourself. Um, we're willing to now kill and have each other killed and bombed into oblivion and destroyed and, and just have so much horror brought to the lives of others for the sake of pride, whether it's national pride or religious pride or ethnic pride. And that's the same thing people in the U.S. do. I, I attribute supporters of the U.S. military to essentially the same thing as people who are supporting the Israeli uh, Defense Foundation um, or force, not foundation. Um, you're, you know, they're, you're cheering on a mechanism that's responsible for so many, so much death and destruction. Uh, why? Because you feel pr because you feel proud of that. Why would you even be proud of that? Just because you were born in a certain geographical area that 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 you know gives you uh, the ability to have your own moral code go out the window when it comes to your military or your government. I mean, I'm a you know I'm not proud to be an American. I'm not proud to be white. I'm not proud to be male. These aren't things. These aren't skills. These aren't things that I achieved. They're things that I just am. They just are. I uh, I am you know proud to be an individual because that's you know, an individual accomplishment, in my opinion, to break away from that herd mentality and become an individual. Right. I uh, was thinking, there's this, uh, uh, I feel like there's uh, a lot more pride going on in, uh, I, I don't like to make this separation, I guess, but I am going to. <laughs> Um, Republicans and de Democrats have the pride thing going on, the herd mentality thing going on. Um, Republicans, maybe more so the way I see it, not that it really is different, but I think once you go Republican, you dive headfirst into the national pride with the military, and you know, vice versa, Democrats go head first into the pride of, hey, we can help others, you know, by hurting others. And I think uh, that it's a big problem uh, if, but if they were presented with the truth, you know, consistently enough, maybe they can break it. 
but again, it's a closed-mindedness. It's a pride that can't be broken without them admitting their faults. Um, I think. Uh, what do you think of that, Thomas? Um, I agree 100%. That was another really good example. That was a great example of it, of the pride, the Republican versus uh, Democrat, left versus right, the whole paradigm. Uh, and partisanship, essentially. People will overlook morality and doing the right thing and their own, their own morality. They will overlook their own sense of right and wrong and their own personal ethics in order to do something that will please their group their party, whatever that may be, they will almost never disagree with each other on on um, issues. And I mean, how realistic is that? Because look at anarchists. There are so many anarchists out there, so many different kinds of anarchists. They're all arguing all the time about everything. They're never agreeing. Even anarcho-capitalists will argue about stuff. You know, yep, you and I do. Regularly. So yep. how realistic is it really to have two, a group of people that always agree on everything all the time um, and also, I believe uh, Democrats can be just as, they can have just as much national pride as Republicans. It's not just the yes. Republicans. They just manifest it in different ways. But, right. Uh, yeah, that's basically a consequence of that collective pride and that groupthink mentality is overlooking doing the right thing in order to appease your peers of whatever the group it is that you belong to. So. Yeah, I mean, if you talk to a Democrat or a Republican, they'll be like, oh, my God, how can we not have a government? Who's going to do the roads? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's just uh, it's a little um, closed-minded. It's, it's a matter of pride. You know, when I see them interchangeably. I think they're uh, one and the same. Closed-mindedness is a matter of pride. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. I'm prideful once in a while, and I don't like that of myself. But I think I think it's the same exact thing, pride. Uh, and what I mean is, when you take stock of your own work, if you believe in your work, if if I don't think that's pride. I, I think that's more like uh, just being happy with yourself, uh, just doing what you must. And yeah. I don't think that's pride. I think that's a, a, not a requirement, maybe, but at least a want, something you want to do. And when, uh, when you're prideful, I, I, I guess that's the problem. Is um, I didn't see the definition and I didn't jot it down. But um, if if they are oxymorons, national pride, then yeah, there must be a lot of gray area that I'm missing here. So in any case, yeah, closed-mindedness is uh, bad. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. All right. You subjectively find it bad. So <laughs> That's true. Some, That's very I true. I wouldn't do it. But um, um, yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll we'll take two seconds. I'll uh, uh, check out the prices here, uh, silver and gold and Bitcoin. The last time we did this show was July 23rd, uh, and that is due to me continuing to move and uh, having problems with one of these big corporations called Verizon, um, <laughs> something we all love here at uh, the Currency of Anarchy. Anyway, uh, the last time we did this was July 23rd. I just took prices here on August 11th. Um, at 9.05, uh, silver was $20.90. It went down by about 90 cents to $20.02. That's not much for a couple of weeks. Um, gold went from 13.11.40 to 13.07.26. That's only about $4. Not a big change. Again, Bitcoin did drop quite a bit, in my opinion. From 16.19.94 to 570.03, so that's about a $50 change. Uh, so uh, Bitcoin, well, Bitcoin's still, you know, again uh, gaining its ground, and but it's been about in that range this whole time that we've been doing this show. Um, it's been anywhere from 500 to 
say about seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars, somewhere in there. So it's stabling uh, or stabilizing a little bit. Anyway, uh, that's my little uh, segue. Uh, yeah. So prices are done. Um, yeah, go ahead, Thomas. I'm going to go back real quick from the thing you said right before. I forgot what I was going to say before you went to the prices. Sorry, it, we paused. Okay. <laughs> I'd be saying that that wasn't taking, uh, I don't know how to explain it without using the word pride. Uh, basically what you said though, it, it is by the definition it is pride because that's a feeling or deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own, one's own achievements is the first part of it. Which that would be, you know, when you accomplish something and you take stock of it as you said and you uh, admire it, you will be proud of it, you'll have pride for that. So. Um, so you can literally be proud of your kids then. Yeah, and that's totally Cause that's legitimate. Your, yeah, because that's your you, something. Um, that's a tough one because is it really much of an achievement to make a child? Because uh, I mean, like anybody can do it pretty much. Right, but, but uh, maybe the way, you, you raise, the way that you raise your children. Yeah. because that's on you as an individual. So if you raise your children to be, you know, upstanding, uh, nice kind individuals who think for themselves, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yes, technically national pride would be an oxymoron then because you're not getting pleasure or satisfaction from your own achievement, nor are, are you getting satisfaction of ones that you're closely associated with, you know, unless I guess technically if you have a kid who's in the military or something, but then technically you can only be proud of what they do, not what the military does as a whole. I doubt that anyone is actually closely associated with the entire government and the military. So, yeah, it pretty much is an oxymoron. Same right. thing with ethnic, ethnic pride, then, technically, because that's ethnicity is not an achievement. It's right. just happening. Yes, yeah. It's just like, uh, yeah, yeah, you already said that. Never mind. Um, yeah, good stuff. Uh the, my question is, how about if if you were a general uh, in the military or the president himself, uh, can you be proud uh, of that uh, because you're the head of the government or you're the head of a uh, regiment or something? Yes, because that's something that you achieved. I don't. I wouldn't say that it's something you should be proud of, but it's something you could be proud of. My opinion isn't plays no part in the in whether or not the answer is yes. I I kind of disagree on, at least on the presidential aspect because you're being elected and it's a, a lot of it's rigged, um, and you never really inserted anyone into the military, at least at first. Uh, so is that, is that know. legitimate? I would say that one's iffy. I would say definitely the general. If you've, achieved, if you've achieved any high ranks in the military, that is something that you have technically achieved. But, yeah, I guess you're right. Like, as a president, when you're, when you're running, your campaign is basically funded anyway by corporate endorsers in your... In your uh, Fans, your adoring fans, and you know your your partisan fans. So I don't know. I mean, I'm iffy on that one. I guess I'd have to think about that one more. Yeah, I'm with you. But um, yeah, I I guess I've exhausted this topic myself. Um, it was a good one though. Yeah, it's it's always one that's uh in the back of my mind. It's yeah. uh, pride is again it, it's something. I stopped subscribing to probably around second or third grade, and uh, you know, uh, and in defiance of my parents and every everyone else, you know, I just I didn't feel it. I and I was pretty much pretty honest about it too. I feel the same way. I know what you talk. I know what you're talking about, like being proud of your school or being proud of something that you had no you had nothing to do with. Like, why would you be proud of something that someone else? Um, did right, so. uh, and yeah, the state uses its violence to try to uh, indoctrinate most, at least most kids, uh, with the idea that they can be proud 
uh, of a whole nation or of a school. Uh, it, you know, it's the violence, it's the force, it's, and that's just utterly against everything we believe. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, from a very from a from almost you know from a very young age, kids are constantly reinforced with this these you know ideas of collectivism. And it's funny because the more I think about this philosophy and the more I think about the things that I see in the world, uh, the more I notice this overwhelming trend of collectivism. It all, so much of it seems to stem from this one thing, this one type of thinking, this one mentality. Yeah. And, that's, and it's, inst uh, why is it being instilled on people then from the moment they enter school all throughout school, sometimes by their parents, sometimes you know by uh, anybody who is an authority figure or um, has any sort of influence on them or their life. Why are they using it to instill this 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 mindset, this mentality that has led to so much horror in the world and so much hatred and so much ignorance and just further? It's you know it it brings people together as a collective, as a group, but in a way, ironically, it kind of pushes people apart. It kind of divides people into sects of people instead of just being humans, just being a, a race of people, one race of people on the earth. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, driving, I think, yesterday. I was driving on the highway thinking about uh, how we're all congregated on this highway and uh, you know gotta go wherever we gotta go as a like bees in a hive or something uh, or ants on a farm or something uh, you know we're all collected and then we all separate into the private sector again and I feel like uh, you know like uh, you know I guess I'm taking a segue now that I think about it but um, Go with it, it, it makes me so aggressive. Being on a highway, it actually makes me exceedingly aggressive. And I notice that. I mean, it, I'm in Boston-ish, and it's normal around here to be aggressive. I, uh, New York, same idea. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like you're going to get that everywhere, or at least more aggressive than you would be in the private sector. And... Uh, if you were, uh, if you're driving on a highway, grouped up, you you feel like you're you're uh, being violated right away. I think that's what the whole problem is. You know, you're being violated and uh, collectivized, and you don't like it. And then when you separate back out, you feel better. You feel, or and I'm not saying you're necessarily happy because everyone's different and that's kind of the whole point but you're you feel better you you feel like yourself you can spread out a little bit you know what i'm saying yeah well you might you might have a little anxiety issue with that or something but i mean Maybe. i can i can definitely a lot of people feel that way they get nervous just about being yours might be uh, metaphorical or something but they get nervous about being compacted like that with so many other people around. I mean, you can say the same. I feel the same way what you just explained about large crowds of people and about trying to make my way navigate through a crowd. I get I get claustrophobic and I get irritated because all these people are so close to me and they're in my personal space and I can't just go from point A to point B and it clouds my mental focus. And... Um, once you, it's it's like kind of like once you leave the crowd or once you get once you hit the off ramp and you're and you're you know back by yourself you feel at peace and calm like you can think again and maybe it's because you feel like an individual again you no longer feel like a part of a group or the part of this forced mob or you know whatever it might be and I think the whole aggressiveness can be attributed to any city uh, or town or any area that has a high concentration of people in it uh, with a, not a lot of sense of community and a whole lot of, um, you know, uh, divisions among people, a whole lot of different cultures and uh, philosophies and just a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of reasons not to like 
one another. <laughs> it's going to cause yeah. that possibility. That's why there's statistically more serial killers. Uh, serial killers tend to be more in locations with higher concentrations of people, larger populations, uh, and no sense of community. And people think that that might be one of the contributing factors to serial killers is a lack of community, a lack of, you know, feeling completely isolated from everyone, from from the people around you. You're 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 surrounded but you're alone. You're not they're not you know, you're not gonna go out, you're less likely to go out and kill a bunch of people that you know very closely and are your friends and family. These are just strangers that are, you know, around you. And my one of my personal theories on that is that might be why uh, maybe why America has such a higher rate of you know like school shootings and Amer and gun related deaths and Americans wanting to kill each other because you know in the small towns we have it but you know and in, in we have a lot of large cities and a lot of largely concentrated populated areas and you know not a lot of community there so a lot of people you know I think it makes them more aggressive uh what you're describing is pride, at least what I'm hearing, because it sounds like, you know, because people see themselves as in groups, white, black, Hispanic, whatever, uh, if they can't mesh with these other cultures, then you're you're creating these killers. That, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Pride is part and, of the reason, yeah. Right. So, but what I'm talking about is not necessarily a sense of community, but a sense of too much, too many rules in one strip of land. Oh, you know, okay. you've got the uh, speed limit. You uh, you can't cross into this lane. You um, watch in front of you. Uh, you can't tailgate. You gotta. You know, all these all these persnickety rules. At least in my head, yeah. uh, you know, it's not so. I guess it's not so much the people because I can walk in a fair, no problem. I can walk on the street, no problem. There aren't many rules for a pedestrian. You know what I'm saying? It's. Yeah. I guess it's the illegitimate authority taking place as opposed to a uh, sense of community. I. I love. Uh, I mean, I've been doing TV shows forever. You know. Uh, is it the fact that the, there's the threat of law enforcement aggression if you break any of these arbitrary rules? Okay. Yeah, and at any point there could be a police officer around the corner, and he's, you know, firing his gun. Hey, uh, how many uh, how, how many miles an hour over are yeah. you going right now? Or are you in the left lane at the wrong time? You know, yeah. how messed up is that one? I so mean, I get it. You but and analyzing you. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's just messed up, like the rules. It, it's not so much the community. I feel like, um, you know, yeah, like you, you say, a lot of people from around the world will come to certain cities. Lowell is a great place. Right now, what, where I'm at right now is Lowell, Massachusetts, and uh, we have a big um, culture mix it's like the melting pot of America, as it were. Uh, you got white, um, uh, actually, a lot of white and Asian people live in Lowell. Uh, if you're willing to bend to the group, as it were, um, mm -hmm. and so uh, you, anyway, you got a big melting pot in Lowell, and I don't mind that. It's great. Uh, I could care less, honestly, as long as you just leave me alone. <laughs> uh, don't, don't, you know, force yourself on me, and everything's fine. Uh, so pride, pride restricts people from being able to accept, being able to entertain different ideas without accepting them. It's true or false. Um, true. So it's not, you know, it's not a matter of how many different cultures are together, or how many different kinds of people are from wherever they are. It's when they, uh, you know, refuse to communicate or at least you know interact with each other to some extent without judgment without feeling superior or inferior to one another uh, it just creates that sort of hostility that 
Yeah. I, I feel like you're going to always get uh, someone that will have that hostility no matter what. And it has to be watched uh, for by the family. Mm -hmm. uh, and nurture, the, the person has to be nurtured correctly and all this other stuff, I feel like. Uh, but I feel like uh, at least that's what I'm thinking. You know, just off the top of my head, I don't know these statistics at all. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I feel like there must be uh, a way to prevent this kind of thing from the uh, as a child. Yeah. It is. And the way to do that is to raise your children without having that collectivist mentality instilled on them by you or by public school or by any other figure of uh, you know, authority, legitimate or illegitimate authority, just to educate your kids to uh, accept people on their merit and not based on what, you know, others, other people who look like them have done or other people who believe the same things of them that they do do or what they believe, period. Just accept people on their personal merit, the things that they themselves have done. Yeah, educating your children on that. It starts. You got to catch it very young because once they start, once they become collectivized and they become brainwashed into that mentality, it's really hard to get out of. It's really. I think yeah. you and I were both probably a part of that at one point or another. Proud in something, some collective pride, um, and it, it's difficult to get out of. It takes a personal, like a personal awakening. I guess I would explain it as is you just realize that the way you've been thinking is wrong. And it's just you've and, and you've you've basically turned yourself off, you've closed your mind to true knowledge and you've just considered that uh, you know everything and you don't need to learn anything anymore. You don't need to entertain other ideas or even hear them at all because they're wrong and you're right and that's all that matters. And everybody, you know, so many people think that. Just as soon as you close your mind to knowledge, you stop learning. How can you learn something from yourself that you didn't already know? Right. You can receive outside yeah, hard. and interpret it and discover things, but you know, you need to just have. You need an open mind. You need to not close your mind from the world because that's when you stop learning and that's when you just become stuck. You become just another asshole on like some message board who. You know, Republicans are right, or Democrats are right, or Islam is the way, or Christianity and everybody else are, you know, sinners. And it's just like you've closed yourself off. You will never learn anything new. You will just be, you've opened yourself up to propaganda and groupthink. And that's just yeah. tragic to me. It's hard for a lot of people, I, and I know a lot of people that are actually, uh, starting to slowly open the doors to at least libertarianism. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people that are uh, in the inner workings of Republican Party or D Democratic Party, they, they're trying to change their mind or open their minds to liberty, I think. Uh, but it's a matter of that closed-mindedness. There can't be anything more than left or right. And there can't be any other answer than these two things. But uh, some people haven't even heard of the idea of libertarianism. They didn't even hear of it. Some people think that libertarianism is just a uh, Republican type of thing. Uh, and because of the Tea Party libertarians? Without listening, without taking five minutes even out of their day to even open their eyes. And that's that's closed minded. That's I'm not even sure that's pride. That's just ignorant? Or no, it's beyond ignorant. I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but uh, I mean it's good that people are actually looking for another answer now. And I love that. I, I mean, I'm seeing this happen. Uh, like the last time I had a conversation with uh, 
one person I'm thinking about was like three months ago. Uh, she's like, uh, you know, diehard Republican, but she watched our episode, our uh, what third, fourth episode, or something like that. And Which one? um, what were we talking about? I I don't I don't recall. But uh, she and I had a little conversation, and um, she didn't actually outright tell me. But I'm like, I, I started explaining a little, you know, of our point, whatever it was. And then I'm like, wait, something went off in my head. You watched our show. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome. And she, she gave a smart smirk because we're around other people. She didn't want to say it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> But yeah. it's good, you know, like people are opening their minds to this idea. You know, it's a simple idea and it, it has no political ramifications at all. It just means no politics at all, uh, no government, no nothing. It's just, it's yeah. humans working, really, and interacting. It's non-political and has nothing, people, people try to attribute it to politics, it's not, it's anti-political, it's non it's the absence of politics, or at least political. At least politics is in reference to government and that sort of thing, which is initially what it means. Uh, right. But uh, you know, it, I've got to say, at least half of anarchists, if not more, current anarchists, libertarians, voluntarists, are former statists. You know, yeah. a lot. So many of them came from statism. So it's just a matter of them uh, just really thinking things through, just stopping and thinking about things and thinking about what, you know, their own personal morals and ethics and what, what is important to them, what they think is right or wrong, and if what they are currently endorsing is it, you know. Right. Well, uh, I think we got to wrap this up. So, uh, yeah, uh, information is the currency of anarchy. Uh, please check us out at uh, youtube.com slash user slash anarchy on Monday nights. We're live. We're taping for the show that goes on to Voluntary Virtues at youtube.com slash user slash Voluntary Virtues Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. So uh, thanks for watching, and take care, everyone.